we are on a journey to learn more about writing success together. So thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Lauren Moore, and with me is the beauteous Kayleen Williams. This show is brought to you by Judas Kiss by birthday boy, Rick Partlow. Happy birthday, Rick. And oh, happy oh, birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Rick. It's your birthday jazz hands. <laughs> And tonight we're talking about health and fitness strategies for everyone, but especially for the sit at your desk types, which is most of our author and freelancing audience. Tonight we brought on a power couple in the indie author world. She's a branding and marketing expert, an author and Instagram influencer. He's a best-selling science fiction author, former model, and current professional fitness trainer. Jennifer and Jonathan Yenez, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks hey. for having us back. Happy to be here. I should say thanks for allowing us back after we did last time. You were requested. Oh, nice. <laughs> you I'm were, somebody. You were, <laughs> all your wildest dreams have come true. Yes, mark you that off the bucket all. list. You were both fan requested uh, by Walt Robillard. He said, you've got to have the Yannis's on. We want to, the audience wants to hear about health and fitness and kind of mindset from Jennifer. Jennifer, you're one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram because you're always oh, positive. And uh, I, yeah, I'm yeah, i really excited to have you on the show tonight, both of you together. Awesome. And thanks, <laughs> Walt, for asking us to be on. Yes, it right. uh, was so um, exciting when I got the message. And I was like, Jonathan, read this. They want us on. So happy, <laughs> happy for the opportunity. And mostly happy to like share our passion with everybody in the community because you know we care about all of you and we want you all to be um, taking care of yourself and staying healthy so you can keep going because this is a marathon and not a sprint. Well, speaking about being healthy and focusing on the marathon, not a sprint, uh, the opening question I want to ask are is, what big wins have you guys seen recently? Anyone can answer you guys in chat. I'd love to hear, see your wins in the chat. What big wins have you seen recently? Are we talking about wins for ourselves, like what we're doing, or kind of like wins that we've seen in the community? I think it's fine. Oh. Cool. Yeah. I like either, either or. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go first, Jen, or do you want me to? Uh, no, go ahead. So I just had a lunch with an author yesterday, and it's easy for me to forget, like, because I'm just like 5 a.m grinding, cold showers to stay awake, like supplements to keep me going. It's easy for me to forget that there's real people behind these books and that for authors that they're making a real income. So I was having lunch with an author yesterday and he was telling me from the money that he's now making, he's able to put a down payment on his first home for him and his wife. So like stuff like that is like, whoa, kind of like, you know, kind of like shocks me and wakes me up a little bit. Just because, again, you can get lost in the grind because just like day in and day out, it's almost like Groundhog's Day. And then yeah. every once in a while you get like, oh, wow, this is like affecting real people's lives and making a difference. Yeah, story starts out as just a dream. And then to see it become reality on print and then to see it make a difference in your life when it starts to pay the bills, that is, yeah. that's got to be huge. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jen. Um, I was just thinking about how um, there are wins that aren't necessarily these big celebrations that the win could be in the learning as well. And so um, coming with um, you know some new authors that I've been working with, rebranding and launching their product as well as you know seasoned authors who are doing the same thing and that like there's learnings each step of the way and that uh, seeing them kind of come on the other side of that just so excited with with zeal and not being um just bogged down by hey this didn't hit this big number but really like i learned a lot about myself and about the process and they're stronger going forward and i would think that is a huge win that i've seen in a couple of folks lately yeah and that's got to be cool as as you as a coach you're trying to guide them along and to see your work pay off and their hard work Right, mm -hmm. authors pay off and, and, and success has got to be exciting. Um, yeah, I took this uh, quiz last night. It was like, what makes you happy on like psycho a psychology thing? And it was, you're the achiever. Like, you like to have wins, you like to accomplish. It's how you are fulfilled, but it doesn't necessarily mean by your own wins. Like, just seeing that come through and people you care about. And it's like, 
Oh, you so know me. <laughs> In the chat, we had a win uh, from Barda today. He said, I managed 20,000 words in two hours and finally got through a really difficult section in half or kindred. Ooh, That's nice. awesome. Definitely a win. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, just figuring all this out. Um, There's a lot of buttons. <laughs> yeah, over one side of the Kaylee, you made it look so easy last week in the last two weeks when you were handling it. Good job. That's a win. <laughs> if you need us to buy you time or to fill in time where you figure things out, we'll figure out some sort of signal you could give us, like something like that, and then we'll just keep on talking to buy you some time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This is kind of like the Brady Bunch. Didn't the Brady Bunch used to do this? They used to like, point to each other because they were in the squares. That's like a flashback right now. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right, um, Kayleen, you got a question for us? Uh, I suppose I do. Do, 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 do the wins. Jonathan, here we go. You've been a personal trainer for years. And uh, Jen, you've had lots of friends and acquaintances who are driven to succeed. Uh, what's one of the coolest health transformations that you've ever witnessed? Um. We were talking about a mutual friend just today. Uh, she's an author in the community. She lives nearby us here in Southern California. So we got to meet up with her in July in person and um, in June. So uh, she has um, multiple sclerosis. And I was telling her about this lifestyle book that I read called The Walls Protocol and uh, just thinking like, oh, hey, I don't know what, you know, the background. I only know is like, you know, you shared some pictures of distress with all the supplements and medication you have to take. And also, um, you know, you know, it's painful to see people going through that and then knowing just the medical expenses that come with it. And so I thought if this is something you're interested in, you know, check it out. And I saw her from June to July, she said, hey, I got the book, I started reading it. And for the first time in years, I have feeling in my feet. I can go on a walk and she goes, it hurts sometimes. She goes, but I don't have brain fog. Um, I can walk more, I feel healthier. I've inadvertently, like her goal wasn't to lose weight, but being active and changing that diet had that impact. And so, you know, she's really busy. She's a PA, she's a VA, she's writing, she does a bunch of other things for some of some authors. And, um, you know, she, if she wants to travel, she's not done seeing the world. And to know that she had that success, like it brought me to tears. I was so very, very happy for her. That is awesome. What, what did her changes look like during the week that she was able to have such a dramatic change? Like um, it was just her, uh, her, her diet and being active and just going on the short walks where she could and, um, uh, cutting out certain things and adding in other stuff. And so, and it was also having a structure that helped her to be prepared. So that way when she was in a crunch or she was at word count or whatever it was, it was these boundaries and parameters for success. So she didn't have to think about what to do. It was like just there for her and that led her towards um, things. It was just, she had said about changing the way she looked about food and how it influenced her body. That is really cool. And then John, you've worked with a whole lot of clients. What's one of the biggest transformations you've seen at the gym? Yeah, so I've even actually worked with some uh, authors, like trained them as well, just over Skype or Facebook, mess like Facebook, um, like their video service. But I would say that the biggest transformation that I've seen is just having clients who are committed to like mm -hmm. stick through it. And like when I'm training them, like I know not everybody loves the gym and it's okay. You don't have to love the gym to be able to go to the gym. Like I know for some people it sucks for me, it's fun, but I get that some people don't want to go and they would apologize to me because you know, like 20, 30 minutes through, they're going slow. They're getting tired. I'm like, Hey, get going slow, getting tired. That's normal, right? We're all human. Like the only thing that you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to give up. You can go slow, We'll take breaks. That's fine. Like if we need to hit a set of 10 of something, you know, you do five and you're exhausted, take a breather, slow down, take a break, but we will finish. I told him, as long as you don't give up, you never have to apologize to me. And with those clients that I've pushed to that next level, they've seen some great results, both in weight loss and also in muscle growth. So I'm still training a uh, person right now 
who's put on 30 pounds of muscle in the time that I've been working out with him. Wow. Cause there's all, there's a bunch of different body types. So like I have the body type where it's super easy for me to gain weight and it's hard for me to lose weight. But the pro of that is it's easy for me to gain muscle as well. So for him, he's uh, like more on the slender side. So it's harder for him to gain weight. But through the years of just in, going in and out and then um, just like making sure he's eating properly and that we're working out at the gym twice a week, he's been able to see some great results at last. So and didn't he have diabetes as well? He still does. Yes, right. Yes. He's type one. So he's also able to manage that and gain a boatload of confidence um, in his strength. Yeah, for sure. You know, one of the things I'm hearing is like in both of your um, uh, success stories, um, transformation stories, is the consistency, you know, mm -hmm. sticking to, you know, that kind of a regimen. If you're going to eat a certain way, keep at it. Don't just, you know, stop after a week. You need to push through the hard wall and, and keep going because that's where, you know, those big transformations are going to happen. It's not a right away okay, I did 10 crunches. Why can't I fit into my tens yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly, it. it's a lifestyle change and not just a new thing to try out. Not a new fad, a new diet. It's making changes that could be start small, compound and have exponential um, impacts on you. So, and it's not about like, oh, sweeping changes and I just threw out everything in my pantry. Um, it's more like as you go, each small choice adds up and you can keep going and there are going to be setbacks. There are going to be quote unquote cheat days or I slipped up and that's fine. Like just like with toddlers learning to walk, she's going to walk and she is going to fall and she's going to get back up. She's going to have a little bit of a sore bum and she's going to keep going. She doesn't give up and say, well, that's it. I've messed up. Therefore I can never walk. So we just need to go into it. That mentality is where we're changing a lifetime of habits and trying to recreate. First, we create our habits, then our habits create us. And so if you're 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is, you've spent a lot of time getting to where you are. And it's going to take as much time and energy to start to pull out those threads and re rebuild yourself and reimagine who you can be and what you can be capable of. Yeah, I think the word diet gets thrown around a lot for people like, oh, I'm going to try this new diet or I'm going to try this new way. You should just throw out the word diet and you should just realize like, hey, this is how I eat now. This is what I am. Have you guys heard the saying that you are what you tell yourself you are? Huh. No, I not the one. You are what you eat. <laughs> yeah, you are sense. what you eat. But for sure, you are what you tell yourself you are too. Like I have so many right. different clients who are like, or even, even authors that I know and I love these people who are on Facebook, but they'll even put themselves down to begin mm. with. They'll be like, oh, I wrote this. I don't know if it's any good, but I hope that you like it. And I'm telling these guys like in this life, there's going to be enough people. Trust me, there's going to be enough people putting you down. You do not have to be one of those people putting yourself down. Like you need to be your own biggest fan because those one star reviews will come. And they will come often and more and more with the more books you put out. So when you're on this diet, when you're writing, because a lot of the same um, things that can apply to eating right also applies to writing, right? So when you're writing, when you're eating right, you tell yourself in your head, like, you're not on a diet. This is just how you eat now, right? So like when you're writing X amount of numbers a day, it's not like, oh, um, I think I'm going to hit it or I'm going to try to hit it. Like, this is just what you do now. This is who you are. So if you tie yourself in your head, you're no good. You're going to be no good. Yeah, you we need call, to tell yourself. We call those automatic negative thoughts or ants. So you get to keep the limitations that you fight for. So by telling yourself that, so it starts all actions and beliefs start in your mind. Like even physiologically, the way the synapses work and the psychology of the brain, if you're telling yourself certain things, your brain's going to believe it. And in the way that you tell yourself. So when you claim it sort of in a positive way, like I am successful, I am writing, or I do write 2,000 words in two hours, I do eat well, I have a strong body, I have a healthy body. Those things begin to manifest because you've already declared it in your subconscious. So in your consciousness, as you're going about your day and you have to make a decision between an apple or a Snickers bar, your part of your brain is going to say, um, 
yeah, I am healthy. Therefore, I am healthy. I will choose the apple. And exactly like my friend JR just said, I think, therefore, I am. I think about and I declare in my mental state, like, what uh, what's going to go on in my life. And then all I have to figure out now is how to make that happen. Here's what I believe. Here's where I am. I'm declaring this. Therefore, I need to work my way down to make it happen. Right. That's why the word diet just sounds, the, the word diet, to me at least, it sounds fleeting. That sounds mm -hmm. like it's a certain number of weeks or maybe it's a month or whatever it is. So you got to get rid of that. And this is just who you are now. This is how you eat. Yeah. If we knew what we were really capable of and saw <clears throat> and like felt let that become to fruition, like there would be this no need to of a concept of a superhuman because we're all just human. Like that's all it is. And if we can tap into that to whatever our extent is and our realities, um, I think we'd be so amazed and could accomplish so much more in our life. And it's not about the doing, it's about the living. You're able to just enjoy what it is that you're passionate about, be it family, stories, networking with conferences, uh, hunting, biking, traveling, painting, whatever, hanging out with your ch children for crying out loud, it all becomes so much more enjoyable. Yeah, and authors are like the worst about this too because I'll see so many pictures of authors who I know and love, but they'll have like that finished screen on their um, computer saying the end and they'll have like drinks or something like that that they're celebrating with. And I've seen so many that are like, the end, I finished my book, but then there's like an energy drink on one side of the computer, McDonald's bag on the other with alcohol. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing to your body? And then, <laughs> and then, not mention any names, but I know so many of these authors. It's not funny. I shouldn't be smiling. I can't stop smiling because I'm a happy person. But I know so many of these authors who have then gone on to have like health problems, right? They're like, they have mental crashes. They have mental breaks. They're not taking care of themselves mm. physically. So their mind can't keep up either. They have to take time off from writing stuff like that. And if they, were to care, take care of their body. Like, cause I consider myself an athlete. I think I'm an athlete. At least in my head, I tell myself I'm an athlete. So if they take care of their body, like an athlete, you'll get that performance out again. Like, I don't know if you guys could tell, but I'm sick right now. But when I bounce back from getting sick or when I do get sick now, it's nothing like I used to get sick before. And I'm only sick for maybe like a day or two when before it would be, you know, like a full week. So what are some of those healthy habits that we can incorporate into our week? into our life, like starting with things that are small and incremental and easy, but, but what are some of those healthy habits that we should build in? There's, I wish, I wish I could say like, it's an easy answer. Like there's one thing. Yeah. So I'll give you like, I'll give you one easy answer, like in a nutshell, and then I'll give you like some tips to help throughout the week. So in a nutshell, stop eating bread and sugar. That's it. Oh. If you stop eating bread and sugar, you would see a dramatic, dramatic results. So Those are like my a, two things. Yes. Chocolate, chocolate not sugar, right? It's not. Chocolate dark doesn't chocolate, count as sugar. Dark chocolate is good. 85% cocoa. Yeah. Look at your dark chocolate that you're eating. 85% and better is good for you in small increments, right? You can't go and eat like a pound of 85% dark well, chocolate. Oh, that'd be too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Rich, it'd be sick in the kitchen where I hide my <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> yeah. So that's like the overarching thing is try to get rid of um, bread and sugar, and then you'll see results. And then... Aside from that, there's like a bunch of small, easy things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to make yourself healthier. So a lot of people don't like eating breakfast. They don't want to eat anything in the morning. Even if it's just coffee, your metabolism needs to start running. So you need to kickstart your metabolism early as soon as you wake up. So I am I wake up at 5, and I'm not a huge 5 a.m. like huge breakfast, but I have coffee. So at 5 a.m. I have coffee, and then usually like around 8 or 9, I try to snack on something healthy like granola or eggs are really good for you, uh, blueberries, something like that, to start your metabolism running because it's easier for your body to burn off the calories that you're putting in if you put them in through small increments instead of eating like massive meals throughout the day. And another cheat that I picked up is if you do want to eat a bad meal, it is better for you to eat a bad breakfast than it would be a bad dinner. And the reason being is if you ate a bad breakfast, you have all day to burn off those calories as opposed to if you eat a heavy, bad dinner at night and then you go to bed, what's happening with those Just calories? They're not being burned off. Yeah, yeah, they're going to sit. Greasy. So if you have to, yes. So if you had a choice, perfect world, we, we don't eat bad. But if you were going to eat something bad, do it early on. Does that mean you go on breakfast dates? There we go. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we do breakfast with our daughter. Yeah, yeah, we eat breakfast with Joe. 
and I, I don't eat breakfast. I yeah. do. Yeah. I do bulletproof coffee in the morning. So I get the calories that my body needs to start going, but letting my brain stay in the other state, the ketosis state. So I have more mental clarity because that's what works for me because my Jonathan and my schedules are very different. So, um, but yeah, from, Jen's the night owl, and I would rather wake up early in the morning and get like the bulk of my work done when most people sleep, and then I have the rest of the day to play. Where Jen stays up to like eleven or twelve. Yeah, that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> I, yeah, I go to bed and I'm like, oh, Jonathan will be up in like five hours. <laughs> so I had uh, a question about a keto diet, but first, do we want to do our sponsor read? Are we doing? It? Are we going to do it early? It's just, oh. Hang on, I haven't scrolled that far. Uh, scrolling. All right. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Judah's Kiss, Wholesale Slaughter, Book Five, by the birthday boy Rick Partlow. Woo-hoo, happy birthday. The battle for Sparta has begun. Logan Brannigan has taken back his father's name, and now he and Wholesale Slaughter fight to reclaim his father's throne. But deposing the traitor, Rihanna Hill, without bringing all of Sparta into a bloody and divisive civil war won't be easy. And while the Spartans fight among themselves, vultures circle, waiting for their chance to claim what's left. When former allies are forced into opposing sides, who can Logan trust to have his back? And who will deliver the Judas kiss? The Wholesale Slaughter series continues with book five, Judas Kiss, also available in audio, audio narrated by the award-winning Mark Peter. A doom <laughs> by his mouth, Nick. It's so epic. <laughs> uh, we should um, say, too, that happy birthday to Michael Anderley, right? Today's his birthday mm-hmm. as well, along with Rick. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, Michael. One, one of them likes margaritas, and one of them likes Dr. Pepper. We'll let you figure out who's who. Wow, cool insider knowledge on this show. <laughs> but you have to get to it. <laughs> yeah, you have to guess who's who. You can just find out at uh, in Vegas. Yes, in November. Um, so back to the keto. We had a number of questions about the keto diet. That's mm-hmm. a pretty popular one going around right now. Um, so one question, what do you think about testing diet fads? Uh, in particular, we had a question from John Evans. He asked, mm-hmm. if you can stick it out, is keto as good as its use by Olympic athlete suggests? <laughs> um, I think what is going to be the best overall, and I'm not an expert. I'm not like a certified coach or anything like that. So just FYI and clear my name. But what I have seen and what I have read is just sticking with whole foods is going to be the best bet. So avoid the inside aisles of the grocery store if you can. Um, Go with produce and and meat and stuff from um, your your butcher section and um, and you should be good to go there. So if you find a good balance, like Tim Ferriss in the four hour body says avoid sugar. Um, Who's the other one that I like? Oh, Mark, uh, Dave Asprey says, you don't need to eat kale. Um, other people are, you know, vegan diet. I had a friend who was fruit only diet and, you know, any number of things could work, but I think start like good, better and best, or there's bad, good, better and best. Like if you're in the bad section, like the standard American diet or the sad diet, like kind of redundant sad, then just move on to good. And then once you feel good, then you can move on to better. And you can, you know, on a sliding scale of one to 10 kind of creep up until you're comfortable because there's no point in having this super restricted life and lifestyle if you can't really enjoy the life. There was a study done with monkeys and they had one on a very restricted calorie and uh, type of food diet and the other one was able, the twin monkeys able to eat whatever it wanted. And they were the same age and they had both looked longer than most of the other monkeys in their pack. But one was slim and he just kind of looked a little deathly and, uh, but you know, technically according to all the data, he was gonna live longer, but he just looked like, put me out of his misery. And he wouldn't play, and he wouldn't be a social with the other monkeys and the other one could eat whatever he wants. He was doing whatever, you know, monkeys do to play besides playing poo. And so uh, I think, you know, that kind of just goes back to 
do what's good to give you that optimal life and lifestyle that you want. So it's just designing that life. Like what is it you want and how do you back into it if you can't enjoy? So I know Jonathan and I are talking about, oh, we eat healthy, we meal plan and we do all this stuff. And, and, and we do, but we also go out and have a good time. We'll go out for family yogurt. We'll, you know, indulge in uh, a nice dinner going out at um, Vegas. Like I said, just take me out to one nice place, you know, one non-TGI Fridays meal and I want dessert and I'm going to order the chocolate and I'm going to be okay with it because I've made um, other decisions leading, leading up to it that, you know, balance it all out. Yeah, for sure. I think you have to stay sane. So a lot of people talk about having a cheat uh, day throughout the week. So I've done some studies and read some books on actually, instead of having a full day where you can eat whatever you want, because if you put somebody like me or, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. If you told us to go bananas for a whole day, we could eat a lot of calories in one day, right? So it's actually better for you instead of having one, like three meals in one day, spread those three cheat meals out throughout the week. So uh, if Monday you knew you were going to go out or it was going to be a crazy day and you're going to be busy and on the way home for picking up your kids, you're going to, you know, stop by somewhere for takeout, then that's one meal. But you had a good breakfast and lunch, right? And then let's say, let's say Tuesday, when it's say Thursday morning for breakfast, you're at a breakfast meeting or something like that and you can't eat healthy. So then kind of think of it like that. So you can give yourself um, some grace throughout the week. Because if you don't extend yourself grace, I think you eventually will crash. That's something that I learned mm -hmm. for two years from in 2017 and 2018, I worked every day. And I know that might sound like an exaggeration, but I remember Thanksgiving mornings up at five, Christmas mornings working. And those two years, I kept on getting sick. So I got sick with the flu really bad. I get a cold stomach you virus. Died. Yeah, I would say like three or four times throughout the year I was getting sick. This year, um, since I've switched things up, I've only been sick this one time, and it's not even that bad right now. And we have a toddler who's around <clears> other <throat> kids, yeah. so I think I think that's a win right there. Yeah, so definitely extend yourself some grace. So like now, instead of working seven days a week, I only work six days a week, just Monday through Saturday. And then other times, like right now, I listen to my body, so I know that I'm getting sick, so I didn't make myself wake up at 5 a.m. this morning. I allowed myself to wake up at seven instead, get some extra hours of sleep, and then I even took a nap today. So a lot of it's just like listening to your body and giving yourself grace, because like what Jen said earlier, like we're in this for the long haul. Like God willing, I have another 50, 60 years ahead of me of writing books. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't need to be in a hurry. A lot of people think like, oh, I have to make all this money now, or I have to hit these books, I have to get these books out now so I can make money. It will come. The only way it wouldn't come is if you give up. And if you give up, you didn't really want it to begin with anyway. So then who cares? So as long as you don't give up, success will come. Uh, oh, guys, comments in the chat is just making me laugh <laughs> so hard. Crazy tonight. <laughs> Rick, Rick started the birthday party early. <laughs> I'm really glad that you brought up burnout. That's an important point. I see authors just really pushing themselves to get out those words. And I, I don't. And sometimes I, I don't see people sleeping. Now, people need different amounts of sleep, right? Yeah. Like, I need eight hours, but there, there are people who legitimately only need five. Like, that's yeah. a thing. Um, but what's your take as a personal trainer? Like, is sleep important? Is rest important? If so, how much? When? For whom? Yeah, for sure. So the four pillars of health are managing your stress, sleep, eating healthy, and exercise. So if you can master those four things, four areas of your life, you're going to set yourself up not only to be like a marathon author, but also, you know, throughout, you know, other things in your life as well, not being sick as much as everybody else because you have a higher immune system, being alert and awake, um, those four things. So I would say with sleep, again, what you said, everybody's different. So I think the recommended is seven to eight hours. I know I need eight hours because I'm at the gym six days a week, plus I wake up at five. So I know I need to get my sleep in. If somebody feels rested at six hours or somebody feels rested at seven hours. I think that's totally fine. Cause like what you said, everybody's different. I also heard a study. This is crazy. How strong our mind is that if you go to bed and I've done this before and it works and it is bananas. Are you guys ready for some crazy stuff? I'm about to drop some knowledge bombs. Yes, so ready. we're about to be plugged into the matrix. That's what oh, I felt God. like when I was listening to this. So <laughs> if you, 
do this experiment, do it tonight if you want. You tell yourself that you're okay with only five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, seven hours of sleep, whatever it is that you decide wherever you put your alarm. So let's say six hours. So you set your alarm six hours and you tell yourself when, while you're sleeping, I'm going to be rested when I wake up in six hours from now. Six hours is enough. I'm going to get some great sleep. When you wake up and your alarm goes off, you will be rested. And it is crazy because I'm one of those people who needs eight hours and I've done this before and it works. I haven't, I haven't done it long term. So I don't know if I could, you know, do three hours a night of sleep for a month. I don't know about that. But if just like those days that are hard for you that, you know, you're not going to be able to get a full hour, eight hours of sleep or whatever you need, try it. So there's a couple of things to piggyback on that. Uh, one, everybody has a different circadian rhythm and everybody has that different number of hours that they need sleep. Uh, one specialist in this is Dr. Michael Bruce and he's considered the sleep doctor. You can even go onto his site and there's a quiz so you can get a good sense of what like the ideal hours are for you to sleep. Um, and the other part of that is um, sleep isn't just about sleep, it's about restful sleep. You want to be able to get basically to a certain delta level of sleep or rapid eye movement um, because what happens in your sleep, if anyone's ever seen that movie, uh, the Pixar one, Inside Out, and there's this one scene where they're going in and cleaning out all the old memories. Well, that's what happens. So when we're sleeping, our body goes into a different phase and it repairs itself physically, um, internally, as well as our, our mind. So we have filtrations um, of our brain that helps us to filter out all of the extra noises and sounds and smells and everything so we can concentrate. Um, and there's all, like, just like, all the ads and all the social media and all the content we're taking all day, our brains would implode if we kept all of that all the time. So when we go to sleep, we have dreams, it's our brain filtering out what we do and don't need, like dumping all of the what it believes to be trash and then storing in our mind palace all the information we want to recall later. So when we wake, if we've been able to do that physically and mentally and we've had good sleep, whether that's three hours, six hours, eight hours, or nine hours, that is what's the most important. And so that's why there's those sleep cycles. And then the circadian rhythm is your whole 24 hour rhythm of waking to sleep. And one of, there's like several hacks to do that. And some of it could be the right temperature, having a blacked out room, having a, a, a cool to cold shower before bed, because that indicates nightfall and the coolness in the air so that goes back to our biology of our body wanting to like go into that phase and it uses the diminished light and the coolness to start developing um, producing the necessary melatonin to get into the proper sleep state yeah there's all types of these like crazy hacks that are really cool and that you can see uh, instant results mm -hmm. right so like when you start getting the proper sleep that you need another one is taking cold showers have you guys taken cold showers occasionally yeah Oh yeah. man, I feel like a superhero. So I started taking cold showers a few weeks ago. And even now, yesterday I was like, oh man, I was coming home from the gym. I was like, oh man, a hot shower sounds good. And then I remind myself like, oh yeah, you don't take hot showers anymore. You're just going to get a cold one. But it feels <laughs> great when you so, take a cold shower. I guess I take a half cold shower. So I yes, have, that's I have, good too. I have to start off warm mm -hmm. because I don't like cold. And <laughs> But like after I get out, if I don't feel right until I take it down to almost too cold. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and then after, and I just, yeah, that's when I feel refreshed. So. Yeah, that's so, great for you. That's great for your body. In the mornings, it wakes you up. It kind of just like starts the day. And then um, it uh, helps you go to sleep. It also um, works with some sort of insulation. So it helps with um, your immune system. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, just looking at overall health and the implications so circulation too and oh, that's it. Your, yeah immune system skin it's better for your skin all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and it's better for your all gas bill yes yeah. all y'all can try it you take your hot shower do all yeah. your scrubby down and then you finish off with your skin will be so soft yeah like even yeah. just the last like start 30 seconds and then go down like work your way up to two minutes and then go from there in terms of how cold you can stand it and like get it on your head get it on your chest and get it on your back um, Tony Robbins takes a dip every morning at 50 degree ice bath. He has an ice bath in each of his houses and he does that every morning. And so, I mean, it also does something for you mentally because everything about us physically comes from our mental state. And if you have the ability to tell your body 
as I'm sure many of the people in the chat are like, heck no, your body is like saying no, no, no. And your mind says, oh yes, you will. And you do it. It's nice to know that like the power of the mind over the body and like I did this and now for the day I've set the tone of body you may think you want some sugar or salt but my mind says no I've made the decision to have clarity because I've got to get workout tonight after everybody goes to bed um, and you know that you know the decisions you make during the day whether it be food or <clears throat> movement is going to impact your ability to perform at the keyboard. So. I can tell you guys another crazy story. Are you ready? Sure. Okay, it's crazy story time with Jonathan. So, <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the percentages wrong, but the uh, lesson remains the same. So they did a study that when people are working out, when you're exercising, and let's just say you're doing bicep curls, because that's an easy one everybody understands. So you're doing bicep curls. When your body starts telling you like, hey, you're getting tired. Hey, this is painful. That's um, something natural that we all have built into us because you don't you want to take care of your body, right? You don't want to cause your body pain because your body wants to live on. That's your so, lizard brain. Yes, that one. So when you have this pain, when your body is telling you like, hey, you should stop, you still have 70% more to give. And I might be wrong on that percentage. It might be 60%. But the bulk of what you have left in you, there's more left. It's just your body naturally telling you like, hey, this is causing us pain. Maybe we should stop. But then it's your mind telling your body like, no, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep on going. That's why I know a lot of guys at the gym who don't even start counting reps until they feel that pain. And then oh, no. they start counting the reps. Interesting. I try going to the gym sometimes. No, I go to the gym sometimes. So, yeah, <laughs> I know that pain. Yes. Usually I, that's when I stop. I'm like, okay. No, that's that's uh, but you're saying there's more I could do. Yes. Yeah, like if people have yes. like a physical limitation or under doctor's orders, like that kind of stuff changes. Not you guys not. can tell which one of us is the more like <laughs> safe, precautious, logical one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Um, well, I was telling my clients too, like there's different types of pain. You have to listen to your body, right? Yeah. So like if it's sore, if it's burning, if it's uncomfortable, if it's causing you to sweat, if you're feeling hot, that's good. That's why we're at the gym. We're at the gym to work. We're not at the gym just like to hang out on our phones. We're here to get work done, right? But if it's like actual physical pain, like, you know, you, you fell like when you twisted an ankle or something like that, then we need to stop and yeah. we'll reassess. Common so like, you know. Isn't common. But right. Because I mean, yeah. when you're building muscle, you're tearing muscle fibers. That's what you're doing. You're tearing your body down so it will come back, build back stronger. That's what you want. Well, while we're talking about gym and working out, we've got a professional trainer to tell us. So. So what, it, what should we do to be safe at the gym? Just real quick. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends, you know, what exercises that you're doing. But make sure, you know, research. So like squats, make sure you're in the right position to do squats. And then I always tell my clients, you know, we'll start off with lighter weight and then we'll work our way up. So let's start off with lighter weight to get the movement down in the right position. And then if you feel like you can do more, we'll go up from there. So definitely get your position right in your stance with lighter weight and then go up. And then gym etiquette, like... Yes. So what if you don't have a personal trainer? Like, Yeah, I would say <laughs> how many times a week are you going to the gym? Uh, two or three. <laughs> yeah, I think you could have a great workout going three times a week. So do you guys know who Jason Statham is? No, but we will look him up. So Jason. he's the transporter. He was in the latest movie with The Rock, Hobbs and Shaw. He's like the bald British guy who drives all the oh, race cars. Yeah. Yeah. Movies. I've been watching a bunch of videos of him that were... Yeah. For English accent that I can't yes. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Jason Satham. So okay. he only works out at the gym for 45 minutes at a time. And he only goes, I think, maybe like four times a week. And the reason he's able to do that and be super ripped is because he eats well. But also for those 45 minutes, it's just like nonstop. Because I can't, I mean, mm -hmm. it depends what you're going for. If you're going for like just muscle mass, if you only want to build muscle, then you can lift heavy weights and take long breaks in between then go lift heavy weights, you know, tear up your muscles, take long breaks. But for the most part, we want to be healthy, right? We want to lose some fat and gain some muscle. So what he's doing speaks to what most of us want. So when you're there for that 45 minutes or an hour, consistent work. Because I can't tell you how much of the times, like, my client and I will be working out at the gym, and we see the same person on the same machine for a good, like, half hour. And we're like, what is this kid doing? And they're on their phones, and they're watching TV and Sports Center and stuff like that. And then they're talking super obnoxiously loud to their friends that they've made at the gym. I'm like, that's not what the gym is for, right? Like, same thing at the keyboard. When you get down to the keyboard to work and write, what we're trying to do is get words out. We're not trying to, like, 
I mean, what we some people do is like go on Facebook and we mess around and we're going to try to get to the words. It's the same idea. Like when you're there, grind. Mm. Yeah. J.R. Hanley says uh, you can be on your phone at the gym if you're listening to his audiobooks. <laughs> uh, he he yeah. means yours. Although well, I mean, you can have that going yours. in the background while you're working. Yeah. 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 And consistently, uh, Christy, she asked about her wrist. I need tips for a wrist strength. And that's important. Yes. I, I will <laughs> say um, this one has been getting worse than this one. Uh, yesterday, if I do this in just the right way, it'll crack all the way through and it feels so much better. But then it immediately hurts all through here. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't have done that. So all yesterday was me doing this, holding it. So I didn't have shooting pains going up through my hands because this yeah. wrap isn't working very oh, well. Goodness. <laughs> Jonathan, yeah. Earlier this year, he uh, put himself into quite a few deadlines. They all kind of came to a head in February. It's the month that we shall not mention, but uh, there was, yeah, no more rapid releases with multiple authors and your own stuff. So all that to say is that he had extended his um, writing word count by day. He was working every day and exactly what happened is he had a hurt wrist and um, all the way up his arm. And so uh, he started to go to the chiropractor. So exactly what JR is saying is a chiropractor will change your life. He went for that session because part of where we are at the keyboard is um, just like he was saying earlier is first get the position right before you start exercising and adding more weight onto it is we need to be at the, um, the right ergonomic position at our desk and for our wrist and uh, start what's well, and then you can build on top of that. And Jonathan, what were the action items or any stretches or anything like that that he had to do or were you just, I don't recall. I've well, I think, um, yeah, first we can address like typing at the keyboard and what you do for your wrist, but then also what you do for the wrist at the gym. It's kind of two separate things. Mm -hmm. So first at the keyboard, it was chiropractor. And then I went to go get a massage because same thing, what you were saying, Kayleen, it was my wrist, but then all the way at my forearm too. So I would get, um, go to the chiropractor, I think like twice a week. And then I got a few massages. I got some wrist wraps to give myself extra support. And then also, Jen, you found that cream that really helped too. Do you remember the name of that oh, cream? Oh yeah, it's a magnesium cream. Uh, I'll yeah. put a link to the group. So it's basically like what athletes and runners use when they get cramps. So um, like our daughter gets super major uh, uh, growing cramps. Growing pains, yeah. And so, and then Jonathan gets from all his training and working out and, and riding. So uh, basically, like it helps to alleviate the muscle tension and cramps. So um, I will put a link or an Amazon link or something like that in the group, non-affiliate Amazon link. I don't want to see what you everything everyone's buying. Yeah. But I mean, again, listening to your body. So it's a marathon, right? Extend yourself some grace, like take some time off. Like I'm the last person and you guys know me pretty well. I'm the last person to tell you, you shouldn't work hard. But if by taking one step back and giving yourself some rest that you need is going to let you take 10 steps forward and prepare and get yourself right for the future, then definitely give yourself some grace. And what I always tell my clients is it's um, resting work. And they're like, resting work, what does that mean? I'm like, you're intentionally resting so that you can work in the future, right? It's not like you're just like slacking off. You need this time to be better. And then at the gym, I did the same thing because my wrists were hurting as well. Because I, I have like pretty small wrists for a dude, I think. Maybe normal size, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, got some, I looked into some weightlifting gloves that first supported my wrists when I was working out. Because, I mean, we were doing, like, bench press and bicep curls and all that kind of stuff. Like, that's, like, the hinge movement where you're going to need a lot of support when you're lifting a lot of weight. So look at those first. And then we can drop some links. Like, I don't have mine with me right now. But it looks um, super thick around the wrist. Like, it takes up maybe this much of my wrist here and gives it support. And then it's minimal support for my hands because my grip is fine. But, like, yeah, protect those wrists. My clients get it all the time. Some of it, too is that your muscles are growing in your forearm when you're doing a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. So that way it almost feels like a shin splints in your forearm when you're lifting heavy because your forearm again is getting stronger. So when you feel that pain, you know, back off, that's your body telling you you did something right or you did something wrong. So if you did something right, that means you tore down the muscles building that stronger. Mm -hmm. Or if you did something wrong, then give it the time it needs to recuperate. So with Kayleen, you say you pop your wrist and then it feels better or it hurts when you pop your wrist. So it's a half and half. It's always a toss up. 
so it will start to get really tight through here. Uh -huh. And um, I have to decide, am I going to pop it or am I just going to leave it alone and go through the pain for the next two days until it goes away? So yesterday I went ahead and I popped it like that, how I do. And of course, that time it was shooting pains through it. But this arm in particular is a little is a little wonky. If I don't wear this to compress it, then I get dead arm where uh -huh. it goes completely numb with uh, shooting tingly pains and I can't like do anything with it. Is it from like an accident you've had before or is it? No, this, you know is what within, it? this arm is um, the last two years. Um, this one, actually, I did have a um, serious injury. I can't bend it any further than that. Uh -huh. Like this one, I can do that. This one, I can't go any further uh, because of a, a box that fell on me and I couldn't get workman's comp because the business was stupid. Gotcha. So yeah, I would say that magnesium lotion that Jen was talking about and then maybe some um, extra protection when you're like wrist guards when you're writing at the keyboard could help. Or if you're at the gym, definitely taking care of your wrists. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have those too. Uh, yeah, consistently. Chrissy had a, a comment kind of like what Kayleen's saying. Um, is this the start of arthritis and carpal tunnel? I know in my late 20s, my wrists started hurting. My elbows started hurting. My knee was clicking when I was going up the stairs. And my dad had something a whole lot worse. Uh, so I cut sugar and wheat those two things and then it, it went away that and I had like rosacea kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, just pairing those two ideas together, you know, if I eat this sub, if I eat this ice cream, it's not going to like have an effect right away, but I know if I keep on eating this stuff, yeah. then the pain does start coming back. So it, it made a big difference in my health. I know it's different for other people, but um, going back to the sugar thing, sugar is the real trigger for me. Personally. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, so there's a lot of foods that can cause inflammation and it manifests differently in different people's body and some ridiculous number of like 80 plus percent of the um, ongoing chronic diseases that we have today or issue has to do with inflammation, which can and does come from the things that we eat and the stuff we put on our bodies. So uh, finding what those triggers are for you and figuring out how you can do like an elimination diet or elimination lifestyle, uh, find what those are and then like give yourself that fighting chance. And even taking out some of like, um, like the processed stuff, the breads, the pastas, the um, cakes, the, the desserty kind of things like that, sugars. Uh, those are the things that are most known for, uh, for causing inflammation. Uh, it can go even as far as like nightshades, like tomatoes, like Tom Brady doesn't do nightshades because those could be inflammation causing. So um, uh, there's, you know, tons of, there's different resources and um, yeah, so you can just figure out which one is the one that's causing your issues and start for like, so like 10 days or 21 days and then, after you've done that for a matter of time, you begin to reintroduce that stuff. Oh, dairy, that's the other one. So it's sugar, mm -hmm. wheat, and dairy. And then you mm -hmm. can start to reintroduce some of that stuff back into your lifestyle and then see you know, what it's causing. And that's what causes MS or not causes, causes MS flare-ups. I also have like a really good friend who has a major autoimmune disease and the inflammations can even infect her internal organs. And depending on how good or bad, you know, where it is, it could cause major health issues if she gets a flare up on her lungs, on her kidney, on her liver. So um, between stress management and her diet, she's been able to control the flare ups and she hasn't missed or missed like significantly less work this year compared to the last couple of years. So. Yeah, and keep in mind too, like even fruits, too much, any, too much of anything could be bad, right? So I see some people who think they're doing great in the mornings by making themselves a smoothie and they're like dumping in multiple bananas and like all this sugary fruit into their smoothie. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess that's better than going to like McDonald's breakfast better or like a stack of pancakes. Of pancakes. Yeah. But like keeping that in mind too, right? So like you don't need to dump in, you know, two bananas and then a half thing of blueberries and strawberries and stuff like that. Because of course it's going to taste good. It's just like nothing but sugar. It's natural sugar, but still a ton of sugar. So maybe like, you know, dump in a handful of blueberries and like half a banana along with some of your stuff in the mornings. Like proteins, like almond butter, if you don't have um, nut allergies, 
pea protein, uh, fermented vegetable protein is good. So it's pre-fermented, then it kind of cuts down on any of the bloating people might have. Um, the protein will keep you fuller longer. A handful of spinach or kale adds those necessary greens, um, also gives you that fiber, <laughs> uh, fiber that we need. So fiber keeps us full. So when we're talking about, um, <laughs> I love it, <laughs> talking about like, whoa, I don't know what to eat. Like I do a menu plan for every week and I write it on a board. Um, I have one of those big um, like butcher paper boards in our kitchen. And uh, what it does is I put it into sections like breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks. And by putting it there, then we walk by and we see it and it's, um, like a, a go-to. So we don't have to think about like, oh, I'm hungry, what should I eat? Like it's there, it's already been decided. Oh, where should we go out tonight? Like we shouldn't. Bought that beef, grass-fed beef, we're gonna eat it because y'all were not throwing out that that food tonight. The dogs aren't gonna eat that good, which they kind of did earlier. But um, so being prepared, coming to a plan, like if you are a plotter versus a pantser, like plot your meals, plot your life. You don't just take it by the seat of your pants when you're writing because there's all these gaps and maybe you don't know where the story is going. The same thing could apply to your lifestyle. So you already know yeah. how to do it. You just need to apply it to these other areas. And here's another one for us to think about. So when you go, if you are going to have a cheat meal, think of the difference between making your own cheat meal or going out to like a drive through like Taco Bell or something or McDonald's. Because the way that the food is prepared, you would never make yourself that cheat meal like the way that McDonald's would with all the sugar and all the salt that they put in you making a hamburger at home or your French fries at home or something like that. You would never do that to yourself. Like they put buckets of sugar, right? Spoonfuls of sugar into your soda. There's tons of salt going into your French fries. So if you do have a cheat meal, try to make it for yourself. Yeah. Clara and even that's going to be healthier. Just posted the doctor's pharmacy, like a farmer pharmacy. Yeah. That one. I love I love Dr. Hyman. So he has a podcast. He is guest. He has books, um, simple steps. He even is on Instagram and he'll post like, eat this, not that. Like you can create this with these five ingredients and, you know, pick a couple of those things and start to um, just integrate them into your diet because um, you don't have to like take it all on and redo it all because it can get overwhelming. And so, uh, yeah, definitely recommend Dr. Hyman. Yeah, I mean, everybody has to start somewhere, right? So it's never too late to start because Jen was actually just telling me the other day that is it every year, Jen, that your body is always uh, regrowing cells, like within regenerating one, cells? Yeah, within one year of time, every single cell in your body is new. Every Isn't that crazy? Cell. Every so, single cell. And it looks the same because it's going programmed off of what's in the DNA, but that DNA is already written. So if you were healthy and thin, 10 years ago, I mean, it's not about being thin, right? It's about being healthy, but excess fat is going to kill your lifespan. You're gonna carry that around. It's gonna be bad for your heart. That excess fat in your system is gonna make your all of your, um, your internal systems work harder than necessary. It is just gonna bring you brain fog. So you, your 18 year old you is the same as the 38 year old you. It's all there in the coding. We've just been adding to it. And so like, the thing that was amazing me the most in that whole thing that you brought Jonathan is that there's nowhere in our cells that says a tumor has to be there. It's in the, like our cells want to be healthy. So if we've got cancer or a tumor on an internal organ, that internal organ within a year's time is going to be a whole new organ. And so it's just the toxicity of the stress, of what we're eating, of what we're putting on ourselves, of our environment that's going in and damaging those cells and causing them to replicate because we're replicating that trauma to ourselves. So we can redo it all. And in a year's time, you can be a whole new you. You get to design that and you get to live that and you get to uh, thrive and have that abundance. And so... Um, again, our power is limitless, really. Yeah, and it starts here. It all starts here first. That's the theme that I'm hearing throughout all of this, is that transformation is not just possible. It's literally happening all the time right now. Yes. But, yeah, it starts in your mindset and the, the words you're telling yourself and the habits that you're setting up and people that you're surrounding yourself with. I love this stuff. It's great. Yeah. Um, when you like quoted um, when we were talking beforehand about uh, my latest 
Instagram posts and how it's really a mindset shift and it's subtle. So like instead of telling yourself, oh, I can't afford this, and you say, how can I afford this? I can't afford the chiropractor. Well, if it's important to me, I'll figure out a way. And if that means I save up and I cut out my PSL for the rest of September and then come October 1st, I can pay that copay or that $30 or that $90 my first visit. And then I'm able to function without pain. It's worth it. So um, the next thing would be, um, you know, but it's important. You'll, you'll figure out a way. Like we are conniving, sneaky little beings that have evolved to this state because we are tenacious and we figure stuff out. And so, like, that's not going to stop. You figure out how to fit writing into your life. Like, you'll figure out what's important. Um, if you need to. Yeah. So I. So I did want to touch on one other question um, that has more to do with setting up the writer's den. Um, and this one is from Walt Robillard. <clears throat> Wait for it. I don't know if I can do it. Fuck. Okay. What? Is, no, I can't do it. What is your favorite you coffee desks? Good Are you going to do an accent? No, I was going to totally try and do Walt, you know, but he has, the, he has this... You can do it. Do it. Do it. You know, do your it. impression. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just talks a lot deeper. <laughs> he just anyway. I should have practiced. Okay. Everybody so should have voice in your mind. A form of distraction, you know, like you're because like I'm standing right now, and I'm sure you guys have noticed I've been very wiggly. Um, I've had a standing desk now for um, about a, two months, and my feet are starting to kill me. And I do have a really squishy pad um, to help with that, but I mean, I stand all day at work. I come home and I stand at the computer um, and then like my hips, like I can't stand perfectly straight because you know, then I'm too tall and then my lower back hurts. So I stand with my legs spread. So like I'm in a constant like spread position. Um, so it has helped. Like you're getting arrested by Josh or Scott. Not yeah, Josh anymore. Yeah. He can't arrest no, us anymore. Previously, previously. He can't arrest us, only Scott. I didn't we miss only the memo, have to yeah. around Scott. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's helped in, in other ways, but it's like it's adding new pain. Well, anyway, that's think, my, yeah. My but as we far as like the writer's den for for health reasons, da, 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 da. yeah, we have a standing desk. We got one in December when I came home. So uh, there's a saying goes, "Sitting is the new smoking," and uh, it's impactful on us for a number of reasons. The way it constricts our um, physiology and the way we're standing, the way we tend to slump or slouch, and that's going to impact that. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm leaning back in my chair right now, too. Um, that our posture and the way that we have access and blood flow to our brain, to our extremities. And um, so that's going to take you know time. But what's key is the same as having a desk that's set up for your size is and your shape is also for standing like if you have a standing desk you still need to have those basic principles where your arms are at you know the 90 degree angle you don't have excess weight and pressure on your on your wrist um, where your head is you know at the proper form so you're not um causing issues in the back of your neck um so that's one and then what standing does is it allows you a little bit more movement because um, the brain grooves as the body moves and shifting is great. And a lot of us think better when we're shifting around. If you think about children, when they're learning the most, um, they're running around and they'll go and they'll come back and they'll read a story, then they'll learn the ABCs. And so this notion of like having to sit in this little box to perform comes from an, an industrialist era of um, organization. It was easier to fit more people in a room and desks if we were all just lined up. It is better for the teacher if the students are all lined up in these little desks and if they're not causing distractions by fidgeting. But that is where our brain works best. And so having that um, option is better for our thinking and our blood flow blood flow. Um, but make sure you have like a foot mat because you are on your feet and I'm just same as like having um, supportive shoes. In addition to our standing desk, we also have a perch chair. So um, it can go up and down depending on if Jonathan or I are sitting here. And sometimes we just like rotate. You'll hear whoever's in the office, you hear it slide, the chair slide back and this chair slide in. And then sometimes it's half 
where I just feel like my rear is kind of just like leaning and perching on there. So um, have different weight distribution, but allowing myself that movement um, gives our brain that flexibility, especially if you're crunching out words, you're in the mid in between sprints or you're analyzing your ad and um, keyword data. Yeah. And like what Jen was saying too, like we alternate back and forth between sitting at the standing desk or standing on that pad. Kayleen, I would say just listen to your body. So like sometimes if I don't have any training sessions at the gym, I'll try to stand more than I sit. But if I had two training sessions at the gym and I killed myself over there and I'm exhausted, then I'm going to extend myself some grace and sit down in a chair, you know? So just listen to your body. Um, so writer specific question. Can you use exercise as a writer? Okay, and then Walt did ask a question. I'll, I'll try my Walt voice. Do you have a favorite type of exercise to do before certain scenes? Tire flips or kettlebells before a fist fight? Running up a stadium before a Rocky Balboa montage? <laughs> <laughs> I had your whole thing about stopping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that's a good question. Um, I don't work out at my house, so I have to go to the gym. So it's not like I could do an exercise and then go right or a fight scene right away. But uh, when I am at the gym, I do feel like characters from the books that I write when I wear my weight vest. So I have a 20-pound weight vest that I do different routines with, like uh, body weight movements, so push-ups, pull-ups, squats, stuff like that. Um, it's great for you, anybody who's working out, is your body will get used to certain movements very quickly. Your body's an amazing machine. So that's why usually like when you try out something new, you're like, oh, man, I'm super sore from that ex new exercise. But then after you do it for a few weeks, you're not as sore as you were when you first did it because your body is getting used to it. It's adapted and it's learned. So the trick is every five weeks to incorporate new exercises because five weeks is about the time that your body has learned whatever you're doing. And it's not as difficult for you as it was before. The muscle memory? Yes, muscle memory. So that's a long way of answering his short question. Yeah. But there are studies that show your posture and your stance does impact uh, your output. So there's this notion that if you're going to go into a meeting or a presentation or any that boosts of confidence to stand in that like superhero gorilla pose, like chest out, shoulders back, hands on your hips, like you can do this and to just stay there and live in that for a couple of moments. And um, that will like bring you that surge that you need um, for that confidence. It's postured, right? Didn't you do that research when you were riding your military sci-fi? Yes, my friend JR recommended a book and it really is all about posturing and that's why guns are allowed. That's why warriors uh, roar before battle. Um, it's getting your head right. You're yeah. That's what I do in the mornings. Like I don't roar at 5 a.m. because Jen and Joe are sleeping. We're but at 5 a.m. when I'm waking up and getting my head right to go and get some work in and to grind, I'm listening to like some like guys in my ear who are like motivational speakers and you know the caffeine's pumping and I'm ready to go rock and roll. Same thing for the gym, same thing for the keyboard. You attack it, you don't go gently. Is there a good way to get rid of slouched shoulders at home, Claire Woods? Yeah, I will add to that. That is my number one reason why I got a, a standing desk was because when I'm sitting, I end up like this. And then I'm like, oh, crap, no, up, up. And then I end up half the time trying to remember to sit straight. <laughs> Sorry. Did you want to answer that one, Jonathan? Or I mean, I have answers for that more at the gym, like posturing and stuff like that than at home. So at the gym, um, there's mirrors around. So it's easy to see what posture that you're in at the gym. At home, it's a little bit harder. So I think just maybe even making yourself um, like a sticky note or a reminder that you put on your monitor or you put around your house to stand up straight. You got to keep it in the forefront of your mind, like any habit, any habit that you're learning, right? You got to keep on doing it day in and day out. And then eventually you won't even have to think about it anymore. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll do it. But you can also help with some, some exercises and some postures. So by like breathing in, bringing your shoulders up to your ears and rolling them back and breathing out. So you'll feel those muscles start to relax. Um, bring me, I know women have this issue for different reasons. Uh, bringing those shoulders, uh, shoulder blades back. And when you, <laughs> when you um, have a good posture overall at your desk, like the right attention or brick the right position um you will uh, like 
you're, you have to be in that right position for everything to work and for you to reach. Um, one thing that uh, my chiropractor had let me know is like the gap, the muscles between my shoulder blades was a little bit wide. So he had me do exercises to bring those together. So that way naturally brings that. If you look at the skeleton, the way it works, like there's supposed to be some natural curves. And when one curve is off, everything else starts to kind of get out of line. And in the middle of that, from your uh, brain down, your spinal cord down through your spine itself is your whole nerve system. And so when our backs are out of line, whether it be from slouching forward, because if you slouch forward, then your head kind of comes down. You can't breathe as well. You can become a mouth breather. So if you kind of get that back up, open your airways, your body's getting all the oxygen that it needs. You are straight up. So all the way down to your, like your but um, like where your um, like by your pelvis, where your spine connects there, um, like your tailbone, that's what it's called. Uh, you're getting all, all of the access that you need. And so it really helps again to, I'm not saying you have to go get a chiropractor, but if you, if you have issues that or um, what is Ryan and Jenny? Uh, physical, physical therapist. Yeah, physical therapist. Um, so they will help get things back, back in line for you and, um, kind of teach you what it is that's causing also our hips. And if we sit down and we get weak ab muscles, our hips are more prone to roll. So if your hips roll forward, thanks Rick, Cossacks, um, your hips roll forward, your chest comes in, your head goes down, your shoulders go down and you kind of just are just like this hunched person at the keyboard versus like opening up and every so often stopping and maybe doing some like stretches and some salutations, some warrior pose to kind of just elongate your body will will help to get you back at the keyboard in front of the computer screen. You should tell them about that hack where you can get your mind and your body back in sync. Do you remember that one? Uh, the one where you're quiet, there's like four things. So you can do- um, The breathing, remember you count in your mind yeah. while you breathe in and you breathe you out. Close your eyes and you just breathe and you count four or seven breaths, uh, seconds to breathe in. And you hold it for the same amount of time and then you breathe out for the same amount of time and you hold it and it's just like box breathing so you breathe in for seven hold for seven breathe out for seven breathe hold for seven and what you're doing is you are consciously you're thinking about what your body would do naturally and subconsciously on its own and so you're bringing those two spaces back together and often what happens is either our brain is stuck in the past or the future while our body is trying to maintain the present and we get out of line and that's where some of our concentration and our anxiety comes from because we're in two different two different time zones really of our life and so bringing it back together will just kind of bring that like zen back in yeah that's like a mental hack that i've used before that really works because when you think about it like your mind's always thinking about something the next usually for us because we're so busy it's like the next thing you have to do right got to do this next and I have to do this next and this next. And while you're thinking about that, your body's doing something else. It's throwing out the trash or feeding the dogs or something like that. So very few times throughout the day are your mind and your body as one. I feel like a monk as one. <laughs> doctor so when you do that, when you breathe, your body and your mind are both in sync doing the same thing. And that's really helped a lot too. Also listening, just being quiet. Like I mentioned earlier, like there's all these sounds going on around us that we filter out. But if we're stop and we just listen to like what we're hearing outside of us, it kind of shuts off all the internal dialogue for a moment, enough for us to just refocus on the here and now. We have a couple more questions from our audience from before. Um, John Evans asks, for an obese person, is weight training more or less effective than cardio to aid in improving health? So is lifting better or worse than cardio exercise for overall health? Is that the yes. question? Yes. Yes. But if, if you're, if you're already struggling with your weight. Yes. I would say if you're already struggling with your weight, the number one thing you need to look at is diet, like forget the gym because technically, I mean, this seems obvious, but it was also kind of like an eye opener at the same time. Technically you can lose weight, not even entering a foot into the gym. 85% of the right? health and weight loss journey is what you eat. It's in, it starts yeah. in the kitchen, not at the uh, restaurants at the or I would say <clears throat> drive through. It starts in the kitchen and you can have that without being like, 
a gourmand cook and having to figure everything out and get it Pinterest perfect. Yeah, a lot of people think like, oh, the gym is where I'm going to lose the weight. And the saying that we have at the gym is that abs are made in the kitchen. Right. And then second to that. So first thing you need to do is get your diet right. No, we don't say diet anymore, guys. Why would you get say that? First thing we do. Yes. You get your lifestyle, eating lifestyle in mind. And then second to that, you go to the gym. And if you're obese, I would recommend doing um, supersets. So what supersets is, is going from one exercise to the next without stopping. And that's going to get you to burn calories faster. And you're also going to sweat a ton at the same time, right? So you could do like 20 minutes on the treadmill. And then right from there, go do 10 push-ups. Then 10 minutes on the treadmill. Then go push-ups back and forth without stopping to keep your heart rate up. So I would recommend actually doing both cardio and weights without stopping. But again, has to be food first. Yeah, so it's like 30 minutes to get ready and get to the gym, 45 to 35 minutes at the gym. And then I'd say 45 30... minutes to an hour at the gym. Okay, so yeah. if you're looking at going to the gym, it's going to be like a two-hour investment. Is that what you're saying? Right, by the time you get ready, go to the gym, and then come back and shower up and stuff like that. But yeah, so cardio mixed with exercising is like mixed with lifting is the best thing that you could do. If you're obese and you're starting off. So do it all. Yes. Do it both. Mm -hmm. Both. Right. It's not just like hundred percent cardio. You're on the treadmill for an hour. And also it's not like hundred percent lifting where you're going to be lifting for an hour. It's a combination of the two. Yeah. yeah because your right. heart rate, once you get into an elevated state, you go into that fat burning. So uh, of the pillars of health, like you have to have a heart that can pump and process as well as muscle to support your skeletal structure structure. And what's also nice is if you get, some muscle growing, the muscle will continue to burn fat even after you're done working out. So it's not like a one and done. So if you go after some of the varied and larger muscle groups, that stuff can continue to work for you when you're not at the gym. Yeah. And again, it all starts up here, right? Because I was just doing a pretty crazy exercise routine with some other people maybe two or three weeks ago. And it was like a hundred degrees, maybe even over a hundred. We were working out in a warehouse now I'm just like drenching sweat and it's exercises that I wasn't used to doing. So it was just like painful. And for a second, I thought to myself, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should take a break. And then I remind myself, you don't stop. You're not the guy that stops. I'm like, oh, you're right. And I just kept on going. So it all starts up here. Whatever you tell yourself, who are you? Yeah, I read a book a long time ago. I want to say it was like the Daniel plan or something of that nature. And exactly, JR, 20 minutes a day on a walk, just as far as you can go, as fast as you're comfortable going, uh, you will lose inches within a couple of weeks. So um, that's, you know, if, if that's what's your issue is just walking. My mom is pretty dang underweight. She's really petite. And everyone's like, oh, she's so amazing. She can't she's walk. Listening. That's fine. She's listening. I know. But what I'm going to say is we she's having... <laughs> she's on Facebook. Uh, some physical things happened to her, uh, like health-wise, that and some surgeries and stuff like that. So she, she started off with um, once she got cleared by the physical therapist, like just ten minutes of walking, just ten minutes of walking, and she slowly has built off of that and is now being able to do like Disneyland all day. So um, it's really it's like I don't have a ton of time, or I can't spend twenty minutes, or I'm gonna have a heart attack if I'm on the treadmill for that long. Just take. A, a lap around your block if need be or to the mailbox and back and then the next time you go to the mailbox and the neighbor's mailbox and you make yourself go down to that stop sign um and then we go from there and then just the fresh air will be nice you've been behind the blue light of the computer screen all day your skin will thank you for that 10 minutes of vitamin d yeah definitely what jen said like do whatever you can but also be honest with yourself like some people are like oh i don't have time to work out i have 20 minutes do you really, do you really only have 20 minutes? Like you're not watching any TV. That means like, you know what I mean? You're go, go, go all day. Do you really have 20 minutes or could you do 30 if you really wanted to? So be honest yeah. with yourself too. You're just cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself out of like a real life. I mean, we only get one. There's no life B in this life. Um, as it currently stands, like if you love writing. If you love what you're doing, like why would you, take that away from yourself if you have the chance to, to give it all you've got. Yeah, like clients at the gym would be like, oh man, this is so hard. I'm like, good, that means it's working. And I wanna add, um, someone Lauren and I were talking to the other day, you know, she was saying, 
you know, don't, don't let fear stop you from the things that you want to do because all the time people let fear stop them from the dreams that they have, the things that they want to accomplish. You know, if you want to, you know, find a way to stop having the back pain, the wrist pain, the being tired all the time, the forgetting who people's names are that you just met and you don't remember if it's Tuesday, um, brain fogginess, um, then find a way to do it and don't let, yeah, well, because this, no, because you want it. So go get it. Preach. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. A hundred percent. And I feel like then those people, you'll have people in your life who will be like, oh, you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or they'll let you be less than who you were created to be, you should just cut those people out of your life because they're not adding to your fire. They're just taken away from it. God bless them on their journey, but you don't need that kind of negativity in what you're going to accomplish. Yeah, I, I always tell Jen, like, I want to be around a group of people where I am the least fit and the least driven. And then you know you're around people who are going to push you to succeed. Because if people are letting you make excuses, you don't want those people in your life. Like think about average and like the grading curve. Like that's C. Do you want to find just passing life? Do you want a life that is excellent and abundant and full and joy and all of these you know wonderful things that we get to have? And so I heard that average is for chumps because you've been brought down by the lowest common denominator. And that's in our mind like no place that we want to live because that's not the example we want to live be for our daughter um nor is that just what you know we're created we have an opportunity like why would we waste it this is all good stuff um we could probably go for like a whole nother hour um anyone who want to come out and get some more come on out to southern california <laughs> just go. Out our house and then you'll good. be like i'm done with good you guys. Yes. yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for coming, joining with us, and giving us all your tips and your insights and your wisdom and just all of your great energy. I just want to—I want to start doing this right now. You know, just <laughs> nice. Get back because it really is killing me today. Um, so don't mind me as I do what my body is telling me to do, as Jonathan has told me. Yeah, and uh, to your point, I know we're winding down, but one last parting little I was story. Just say, do you have any last words? Yes. One last word is, uh, I didn't come up with this. I don't know where I heard it from, but it's not mine. So don't give me credit. But what you were talking before about fear, Kayleen, it's people are afraid um, if they fall, right? They don't want to fall. They don't want to fail. So saying is people are afraid, like, what happens if I were to fail? But what happens if you fly? Oh, but darling, what happens exactly. if you fly? Yes. And oh, I want to add to that the bird is not afraid of falling or the branch breaking because it is not its faith in the branch, but it is the faith in its own wings. Mm. Yeah. The faith like in yourself. That. Amen. And another thing to add on to that is it's not the strength of the wolf, but it's the strength of the pack. So surround yourself with people mm -hmm. who are just as hungry, hungrier than you are to succeed. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Uh, three years ago, I mean, I was hustling. I was doing what I needed to do but I was not near as far mentally focused so fully. That's not even a word, but I make it a word right now. <laughs> and, and all that good stuff than I am today. And that's because of the people I've surrounded myself with. This is a great group. Like this is an amazing group. So when you guys asked if we could be on, I'm like, yes, we want to be on because you know we've met many of you at Vegas. We've had um, chats online. We see your struggles. We see your successes when we're on, you know, the group. And uh, you're not just like people behind the keyboard. Like you're real people, and we consider you the pack. So let's keep bringing each other up and celebrating with each other, and and reaching out when we need um, a hand up. So whether it be physical stuff, just getting in the right mental space to believe in yourself or um, the food and diet, like these are passions of ours and we would we'd love to, to share what we know and then learn from you as well. And we thank you for coming on. And I mean, every time you come on, I always just feel so inspired and just like, fuck yeah, I can do anything. You can, you, can. you literally can. That's you the can. crazy thing with you can. Like I right. honestly believe, I mean, like, I could probably build a rocket ship if you gave me enough time. Like I know nothing about yeah. building a rocket ship, but if you gave me enough years and I was dedicated enough, I would build a rocket ship in my backyard. Like I've that's, done it with writing. That's you know what I mean? Right. Come up with building a rocket ship. 
<laughs> yeah, like it. Well, like eight, seven and a half years ago, like I hadn't written a single book. Now they're. I mean, now we're doing pretty well. Like we're, no, we're doing sure. all right. I don't have to go to it eight to eight. So I'm Jen was able to quit her job. We we're able to buy I'm a new happy. car, like with all this stuff. So yeah, for sure. After seven and a half years of grinding at something, like keep on going. It's there. The only way you're not going to get it is if you quit. Yeah. Decide to do it and go for it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, everybody have a great night. We're going to go eat cheeseburgers. That you made? That you guys made? <laughs> no. All right. So before you go off and eat cheeseburgers, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> and part part participating in uh, this show of, of health for us authors, because we are sedentary a lot of times, and no more excuses. Drink your water. Do some stretches. Half your Do body stretches. weight ounces of water per day. Like, we're exactly. mostly water, so let's replenish that. Replenish all the water, all the goodness. Okay. Um, and for, oh, and also subscribe, hit the bell, do the, all the clicks and the, and the buttons so you know what's going on, you can hear from us. Be sure to check back next week. Uh, actually, no, skip it. For Lauren Moore, I'm Kaylin Williams. Thank you for joining us on your writer's journey. Be sure to check back next week where we're going to talk about some reading, writing, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium, The Writer's Journey. Good night. Good night.